important issue is our learned speaker for today, Dr. Sanjeet Agarwal from Kolkata. Chairing the session are our knowledgeable chairpersons, Dr. Ruksana Khan, ma'am, who is the chairperson of Uttar Pradesh Women Doctor Wing Indian Medical Association, and Dr. Hem Prabha Gupta, who is a very senior gynecologist and teacher to all of us. And uh, she has been professor in King George's Medical University in the department of OBGYN. We welcome you, sir, and the chairpersons. Now I invite Dr. Ruksana Khan, ma'am, to kindly introduce our learned speaker and start the session. <coughs> Good evening, friends. Uh, welcome, Dr. Sanjeet Kumar Agarwal, sir. Uh, Dr. Sanjeet Kumar Agarwal, who is MBBS, MS in European Breast Surgery qualification done. He is a, at present, he is a consultant breast onco surgery, Tata Medical Center, Kolkata, India. He has many major achievements. European Surgery Qualification, ICC, ACREC Fellowship 2015, Indo-American Cancer, Associate Fellowship 2017, Breast Surgery Training in Helsinki University, Hospital, Cleveland Clinic, and MSKCC. Honors, awards, and publication others are Australia and Asian Pacific <coughs> Ecology Research Development Accord Workshop 2080 Fellowship Granted, European Molecular Biology Organization Research Leadership, Course March 2019 Educational Grant, 25 peer reviewed publication. So, welcome, Dr. Sanjeet Agarwal, once again, over to you, Dr. Sanjeet Kumar. Thank you, Dr. Ruksana, for the kind introduction. And I would like to thank Dr. Manisa. She contacted me for this presentation. And it's a privilege to be here. And I can see around 43 participants spending their nice evening for this presentation. So many thanks to the participants also. So today, I would like to present about the breast cancer, what every surgeon should know, it's not about the breast surgeon, it's about general surgeon, even a medical officer or even a sister working in the ward, what every person should know about breast cancer. So I made my presentation very simple. If you have any question, you can put this in the chat box or you can ask me in the last of the presentation. So sharing my screen, give me a second. Can you see my slides? Yes, yes sir. We can. Yes. Okay. okay. So clearly audible to all? Yes. Yeah. So very good. Good evening again to everyone. So why breast cancer is important for India? So to start with, I want to present some data on you to you. Means why we are everyone is talking about breast cancer at present and why everyone has to participate who is working in the healthcare setting to help patients with the breast cancer and to diagnose it early if possible in India. So this is the public, this is the publication from WHO itself. So it was 2018, WHO generally published every two year or every three year about cancer incidents all around the world. And you can see that the pink is the breast cancer. So you can see that the breast cancer was most common cancer in 154, <coughs> countries out of 180, around 180 countries. And you can see the whole of the India is pink. So breast cancer is the most common cancer amongst females. Overall, it's now the most common cancer for the India. So incidence wise, incidence is increasing. What to be the mortality? What's the mortality, cancer associated mortality? So if you will see again, the cancer associated mortality, the Majority of the world is in the pink. So most common cause of cancer death is mainly by the breast cancer. You can see the pink here for the India. And you can see here out of 180 country, 103 country had the mortality highest with the breast cancer itself. So it's the cause of the concern, not for the India, it's for the around the world. So 
So they have published the number also estimated how many pa new patients generally we see in a year in India. So you can see that around 162,000 patients of breast cancer was estimated to be diagnosed with new breast cancer in 2018 as per the WHO data. So its burden of the disease is very high. And if you will compare with the other cancer, it's around 27.7%. So one out of the four cancer is breast cancer at present in India as per the 2018 data. We don't know the data of 2020. Most probably WHO will publish next year, early next year about the 2020 data. And then we can, our gut feeling is that it will increase even more. So breast cancer is the most common cancer in India, including majority of the world. And it, the, it is the most common cause of the death also. Sorry for the interruption. So to summarize the what's the burden of the disease. So it's the most common cancer. We have seen around as per the WHO prediction around 1,62,000 new cases in 2018. Around one lakh of death, it's around 90,000 breast cancer death in 2018. And the five year prevalence was around four lakh of the patients. So, so what is the five year prevalence, prevalence to give you an idea? So around in the 2018, in the India, almost around four lakh of the breast cancer patients were surviving. So this is the disease burden. If I will say that what's the number of the breast cancer at a particular time in India is around four lakh four lakh patients in a defined time period. So what's the five year survival? In a cancer, we generally say five year survival. If I am diagnosing a patient, what's the chances of our survival in the next five year? So after five year, how many patients will survive? If I'm seeing 100 patients, how many patients are surviving after five years? Is it 60%, 70%, and 90%? So unfortunately, there is no data for around the world from WHO. So this study was done by Concord 3 study. This was a popular study among the cancer physicians. And it was done by the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine. So what they found that the five-year survival data, it was conducted between 2000 to 2014. They have included 66 countries. And you can say that the five-year survival was around 66% in India. It means if we are diagnosing 100 breast cancer patients, in 2020, out of which around 34 will die by 2025. Between 2000 to 2025, one out of the three patients will die in the next five years. And surprisingly, it is more than 95, 90% in the developed country. And the five-year survival all among the 66 country was lowest in the India. So why India is ranking last in the survival? What's the specific cause of it? We need to know the cause so we can tackle the cause and we can concentrate on that particular focus and correct it and can help the patients to give better survival. So this was a study done by the, a group of the Indian physicians also, including TMH Mumbai and the Kidwai from the Chennai. And the, what, they, what they have done, they have done a meta-analysis of number of patients and what's the five-year survival and what's the factor influencing survival. So you can see that the five-year survival as per Concord data is 66%, but in the Indian study, in the majority of the center, it's not even crossing 40 to 50%. So it means one out of two patients will die in the next five years if you are seeing a breast cancer patient. And if you will see the number of the causes, means what's the cause of the low survival in India is, it's a majority is written as the higher stage of the diagnosis. So what we generally see, we see the patient in higher stage of the presentation. What about stage of breast cancer? Little bit, uh, I'm giving you the idea of little bit about stage of presentation. So what is stage zero? It means cancer localized within the cell. Stage one is tumor localized less than two centimeter and localized within the breast. Stage two is tumor between two to five centimeter and involving plus minus ipsilateral mobile node, means mobile node in the axilla. Stage three is locally advanced disease where we are seeing fulminant disease with involvement of the skin and the chest wall or the involvement of the heavy nodal burden disease. And stage four disease is involving other organ of the body, means 
its breast cancer process from the breast to involving other part of the body just like bone liver lung and brain so is there any effect of survival as the stage is increasing is the chances of survive survival decreasing so this is the nice pictorial view you can see that this is 0 1 2 3 and 4 stage so as the stage is increasing from here to 0 to 4 you can see that survival is decreasing from 100% this is 5 year survival rate to 16% if it is metastatic breast cancer so diagnosing early is very important and as per the icmr data 60% of the patient in india present in stage 3 and 4 so we are lacking here and if we can detect early we can give better survival to the breast cancer patient and as i said early one out of two women died due to breast cancer in the five year period in the india and the main cause as per the studies and as per the experience it says that it's the higher stage of presentation so we re we really need to work on the stage of the presentation and it's the society responsibility and i'm really happy to see that women from the lucknow they have created a group and through the ima and the different ngo they are doing the awareness program so early detection is very important so cell, are we seeing any stage 1 breast cancer in india so if you will see again the india is lowest in the number so less than 5% of the patient present to stage 1 breast cancer to the clinician here in india and we are little better better than nigeria only so is, is the the condition is very drastic condition for the patient because awareness is the key and why people don't come to the clinician it's mainly due to the lack of awareness and some uh, i personally believe it's mainly due to the lack of awareness not due to the infrastructure india has now in built many cancer institute and if the patient will go early to that cancer institute or any clinician who who know and treat cancer they can give best outcome if can be detected early so to summarize this thing 50% late stage mainly stage 3 and 4 the five year survival is 50% and stage is the most important factor if we can really diagnose the patient in early stage we can give better survival so i think it's i covered incidence is increasing day by day in india the the causes are multifactorial due to mainly due to the lifestyle changes survival is poor due to higher stage of presentation as per the icmr data in 2012 60% present to stage 3 and 4 and it's more and less same in the 2020 also it may be changed to 1 or 2% but almost one out of the two patient in our clinic come with the locally advanced breast cancer or metastatic breast cancer and these things are least important these things are more important so awareness is the key so how to detect early what are the signs of breast cancer everyone should know including the common public and the clinician where the where there is an alarming sign so telling little bit about natural history of, history of the disease so this is the molecular pathology how cancer originate so generally healthy cell convert to abnormal cells and then there is a pre invasive cancer just before cancer and screening generally detect in a pre invasive cancer stage and then it go to stage 1 2 3 and 4 and ultimately to the death of the patient so early detection is we need to work here and we need to work here so we need to work on the screening also is it possible in india i will come in the next slides and we can really it's a possible for everyone to work in this setup early detection we can create awareness and we can diagnose early if we can diagnose in stage 1 and stage 2 five year survival is around 90% not around 60 to 65% so screening what's the common method of screening is the mammography but large scale screening in india huge population it's it's really difficult to cover every possible female which is who is suitable for the screening as per the age of between 51 to 69 for the screening by a government initiative so if i if you will ask my view point on this mammography screening for the india is rather looks looks like impossible thing to cover the whole population 
opportunistic screening means people coming to us if i am working in a breast setup the people come to us that i want to do mammography but is it really helpful so in the literature it was found that it's not helpful opportunity opportunistic screening is generally not helpful the screening has a pathway i will come in little bit detail in the next slide and we need to follow the pathway if we are doing a screening merely doing one time mammography after 50 will not work so you have to define that frequency uh, how many time you will do mammography who who will read mammography and who will treat the patient if there is a impalpable lesion so these all thing to be defined before prescribing mammography to a patient cell breast examination is it helpful so we don't know the answer the uh, for the india rct done in the china and russia and it was found that it has no effect on mortality what about clinical breast examination it was found in some study to be maybe useful and the government of india is heavily working on the clinical breast examination so what is organized screening program if we really want to do a screening we have to define the all things before advising a patient a mammography a normal population a normal person a mammography you should define the whole thing whom you will do a screening what will be the screening test what will be the frequency and how you will manage because if the patient has impalpable 1 cm lesion how many surgeon can do the surgery with wire localized excision of that patient the patient may have ended in the mastectomy and the full axillary clearance and that was unwarranted for this patient because if this is very small lesion it can be done with the simple excision with sentinel lymph node biopsy so we re you really need to think about advising screening mammography it's a very tricky and it has multiple multiple parameter to think before starting or advising screening high recall and call system so this is the uk screening pathway or or all, all about the around the world they follow the breast screening pathway so invitation We, women are generally invited for a screening it, it's not that women is coming to my clinic and requesting for the screening it's about the public initiative and generally it's reported by two radiologists do we have this this many radiologists in our country to report and if results abnormal what to be done if results normal and the whole thing is defined for any western country where they, where they follow the breast cancer screening pathway so this screening clinical breast examination screening was started by government of india in september 2019 and i will request all of you to go and check in the ayushman bharat scheme scheme that around 53 lakh of breast cancer around 53 lakh of the normal people were screened for breast cancer it was done by the mainly by the phc staff primary health care staff and health minister has released this thing in september 2019 about this these many men females have screened for the breast cancer so little bit more about the program so it was a composite screening so they have as per the government of india scheme any person with more than 30 year will be screened for hypertension diabetes and three common cancer oral breast and cervical cancer depending upon the sex of the patient or gender of the patient so for the breast examination as per the government scheme it is by clinical breast examination and if something is finding suspicious refer to higher center so everything is defined here you will if you will see that is screening what is to be screened target population is defined greater than 30 year how the screening clinical breast examination if suspicious the centers are defined where the patient will go the frequency here as per the ayushman bharat scheme is every after every 5 year patient will be recalled and it was done mainly by the anganwadi worker trained for cell breast examination the screening pathway is clearly mentioned and i would request all of you to please go and see this it's a useful document to see so early detection so awareness is for early sign is the key so i want to ask a question to the participants what you feel breast cancer generally present with painful lump or painless lump so you can write your answer in your, in the chat box i will wait for 10 to 15 second to see if any response so breast cancer generally present with painful lump or painless lump so i'm seeing one response of painless lump 
yes good means so that's the major major concern in indian setting because indians generally go to the doctor when they feel some pain so i have seen many female they said that doctor i have ignored this because it was not painful so this is our duty to say to the society that if you are feeling a painless lump in the breast please don't ignore it go and see a doctor in a, in, in in your local area so attention seeking is mainly for the pain in india and if we can do only one thing from our side that we can convey this to the normal people and normal healthy people normal normal healthy female that if you are feeling a painless lump not painful lump painful lump may be also associated with cancer in the later stage but if you are seeing a painless lump in your breast please go and see the doctor apart from the lump what are the signs of the breast cancer so this is nice slide summary so skin can be indented there may be skin erosion so new fluid discharge in the nipple these are the some minor signs of the breast cancer majority present with the painless breast lump growing vein you, you will see suddenly see dilated vein in the breast area sunken nipple or retracted nipple new shape or size orange like skin the skin of the breast just like looks like a orange like and invisible lump in the screening detect in screen detected cancer so these are all the symptom probable symptom of the breast cancer and in any awareness program we generally see say about this this picture is very nice view and if we can explain this to the healthy people about the awareness so this will be really helpful in their side to see what's the abnormal and they can go and see the doctor as early as possible so what is approach to the breast lump in the nut cell so this is a lump here you can see little bit of bogginess in this side of the breast so how to diagnose means if you are as a clinician is sitting in a your clinic and a patient is coming to you with the breast lump so three things are very important one is clinical examination first examine the patient properly examine the both breast and axilla then advise if you are feeling some abnormality if you are seeing a breast lump please do imaging depending upon her age or depending upon many things i will come in the next few slide and if imaging is suspicious please do cytological test and biopsy uh, either fnac or biopsy which is better i will come in the further slides so this is pictorial view of the triple assessment so clinical examination radiological examination by mammography or ultrasonography and tissue sampling either by fine needle aspiration cytology or core biopsy so why it is useful you can see that this is a nice publication from the jama in 2011 when the triple assessment was very popularized you can see that with each examination if we will see it will do physical examination only and label the patient as cancer chances of having that mistake is around 20% if we will include mammography in one out of 10 we will miss if we will include biopsy if we will do clinical examination or biopsy or mammography or biopsy if we will miss anything it's around 8% false negative but if if we will include all three thing the sensitivity and specificity is both is around 100% so if there is patient has cancer and if you have done the triple assessment thoroughly chances of miss diagnosis is very less so triple assessment is very important so what is mammography there are two view craniocaudal view and mediolateral oblique view so it's good for the fatty breast in elderly age in the young in the young female patient it's the sensitivity is very poor so false negative is very high so this is ideal mammogram all of you must have seen this mammography so both side breast the two view one is craniocaudal view one is mlo view so ideal mammogram is generally bilateral two view always and good mammograph should cover all of the breast in both views i'm not going in the radiological detail that you have to see the infra mammary fold here if it is covering the infra mammary fold and the lateral part of the breast yes or no 
so please cross check mount mount to back to back so this is back to back back arrangement to compare the both side in a one image itself and systematic examination of the all the views together is required for a complete diagnosis of a breast lump in a ideal mammography what is barats so this is very important if you are a clinician and if if you if you are lucky enough to have radiologist in your setup please request him or her about barats category so what is barats category it's a american breast imaging reporting and data system and the radiologist generally categorize any abnormality in the breast in the these 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 category so if you are seeing a report of 0 1 and 2 category 0 means radiologist want more investigation so you have to recall the patient if the category is 1 or 2 is a negative or benign finding don't do anything if it is category is 3 it's a probably benign and the what we do and what international protocol is that you have to do 6 month follow up either clinical and clinical plus radiological follow up if it is 4 or 5 it means it's suspicious and we you need to do biopsy so barats categorization is a unique system and if you have radiologist request them to report the barats category and that will help you in decision making so it's very important to know about barats categories for younger women i said already always if you are doing mammography it's okay if more than 40 year but always do usg if you are seeing a dense breast because usg may detect a small lesion in the dense breast which can be missed by the mammography indication of when you need to do breast usg not mammography so as said breast lump in less than 40 year please go and do the start with the usg first lump during pregnancy and lactation in the pregnancy try to avoid mammography you can do it with abdominal cells but if the patient is presenting with non specific finding better to start with usg and avoid the exposure of the mammography evaluating as a support to mammography if you are seeing a lump and the mammography is saying no lump please do usg and reconfirm that it's not a dense breast and you you are not missing anything if you you if you want to do some usg guided biopsy that's a indication of usg and in the breast implants and mastitis and nipple discharge in the young lady start with the usg don't jump directly to the mammography so what are the malignant characteristic so this this is a picture you can see this is a breast cancer detected by the usg so you can see that it's a taller than wider so it's tall not wide so taller than wider is popularly known as anti parallel orientation or non parallel orientation so that's a sign of the breast cancer it's a hypoechoic it, it means it's a darker and sometimes you can see the micro calcification white 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 area also and the marge is infiltrative you can see the speculated marge in the usg also so these are the finding of the breast lump in the usg what to do fine needle aspiration cytology is simple pulling out some fluid from the tumor tissue tumor from the breast lump and this is <coughs> sorry this is core biopsy where we take chunk of the breast tissue by using a core cut needle so you can see here needle with the this is the slot for the specimen we generally insert the needle inside the tumor and then we will fire this flange over this to cut the tissue and this is the tissue here so this is the way we do core biopsy which is better core biopsy or fnsc so always if you have set up a core biopsy core biopsy is better there are many thing to be said about core biopsy because it can differentiate between in situ and invasive cancer and fnsc is the major problem is if you even if you will do fnsc many time it will come as unsatisfactory sample chances of getting unsatisfactory sample in the core biopsy is very less and fnsc need really a special experience because it leads around as per the data you need to do around 30 to 40 fnsc first before we experience in doing multi doing the fnsc and getting a accurate result but the core biopsy learning is around 5 to 7 cases only so it's easy to learn so core biopsy why it is gold standard now because volume of the tissue is high you can take more tissue it can differentiate between invasive cancer and in situ cancer 
why it is important because management plan is different for in situ disease generally chemotherapy is not required generally whole axillary clearance is not required and we can reduce the morbidity of the treatment itself if we can detect in situ disease if you are giving new nsct is new adjuvant chemotherapy if you are giving chemotherapy core biopsy must to be done because we need to know the er pr and her2 status and if you will give chemotherapy only on the basis of fnsc we may don't know the er pr and her2 status if there is a complete response because tumor may completely vanished with the chemotherapy so this is very important in nsct setting and the in the tertiary care center we do biobank tissue also for the future research for biobanking we need core biopsy specimen it's very difficult to preserve the fine needle aspiration cytology specimen so this is work up of the patient with breast lesion and symptoms so what we generally follow this is our protocol so if a patient is coming with the less than 20 year with any breast specific symptom and if we detect some abnormality we start with the usg and if usg is suspicious and usg is saying that only benign disease nothing is there we don't do biopsy in the less than 20 year 20 to 30 year we generally do first usg and if usg is seeing any suspicious lump or any cancerous lump we do biopsy and if it is confirmed cancer then we will top up top up it with mammography or mammo plus usg 30 to 40 year if there is a family history of take good family history if the family history of cancer is there in the first generation go to the mammography directly if there is no family history we generally start with the usg greater than 40 year straight forward bilateral mammography to start with for any breast specific abnormalities and ultrasonographically as required in the pregnant lady or in lactating lady we generally start with the ultrasonography of the breast so this advantage of no triple assessment suppose i am a surgeon and i have operated the patient by seeing only i am very sus this is benign lump i will do surgery so in the 10% of the cases i said that the sensitivity is very less of clinical examination plus radiological examination even it's one out of the 10 you will miss the cancer so what you will see the post lumpectomy after excision of the that lump we will diagnose cancer but we don't know what's the margin have we removed the complete cancer because in our mind it was that it's a benign disease and i am removing that area only what we will do for axilla can we do sentinel lymph node biopsy in this so if it is a triple negative breast cancer and you have done surgery you could have done the biopsy you will delay the chemotherapy post surgery if the patient is coming to you it's very difficult to do mammography and assess the if there is any residual lesion or not so not accurate till 6 week and it stresses both to the clinician and patient and we have seen many legal issue where patient has gone and put the case in the court why biopsy was not done why triple assessment was not done So it's a standard of care, and I will request all of the clinicians who are here, please follow the triple assessment with the heart itself. In Tata Medical Center, also we see around 10% of the patient. We see around operate around 1,000 patient in a year, and we see 100 patient come with the triple assessment. 100 patient generally come without triple assessment, and managing this group of the patient is really very difficult. So. so we have done a study in the tmc kolkata of triple assessment where the triple assessment was not done before surgery we have done the repeat surgery and done the sentinel lymph node biopsy and we found that it's acceptable and it's always if you are a clinician and practicing and you you are seeing a patient with the breast lump excised outside with no comment of the margin please re excise the cavity and do the axillary staging because in the 50% of the patient we found residual cancer as per our study so little bit about surgical approach i am not going into the detail so what we generally see so generally we think can we avoid removing the breast in particular patient so if breast conservation is possible we do breast conservation surgery with radiotherapy so if breast conservation surgery is not possible can we re do reconstruction can we offer reconstruction to the patient and sometime cosmetic surgery for the opposite side for the matching of the opposite side 
so this this is the th three thing we generally think for the clinic for any patient can we do breast conservation in this lady a breast conservation is not possible Re reconstruction is possible yes or no so please better to offer reconstruction to the patient and sometimes cosmetic surgery in opposite sides for symmetrization of the both breast similarly for the axilla can we avoid removing axillary gland by doing minimal surgery so that's the sentinel lymph node biopsy and we use the technique of blue dye plus fluorescent dye we have stopped the radioactive dye from the last two year and we have moved to the fluorescent dye to avoid radioactivity cost and the radioactivity exposure to the patient so personalized treatment for the chemotherapy and radiotherapy so there are multiple treatment available now and i will request all of you to take help of the oncologist for de deciding chemotherapy and radiotherapy for any patient so to conclude incidence is increasing <coughs> sorry survival is poor higher stage of presentation is the main problem in the india we can do stage migration by creating awareness among the normal population and among clinician also about the from the diagnosing from stage 3 to stage 1 is screening by clinical breast examination may be useful we will see the result in next 5 year by the government initiative people involvement and awareness is the possible national cancer program is started in 1975 and we are almost 50 year and personally i feel that our progress is very slow and we need individual clinician participation to decrease the and the triple assessment is the key for the diagnosis so thank you i am concluding with here only thanks for the organizer for giving me the opportunity to present and i am happy to take question if any thank you so much sir i would request our uh, co chairperson dr hemprabha madam to give her expert comments on the uh, presentation dr hemprabha madam are you there Yes, I am here. Yeah, ma'am. We need your expert <laughs> comments. It was a wonderful talk by Dr. Agarwal, and he told us about uh, basics for this cancer breast. And as far as I am concerned, and what I feel that clinical breast examination is very important, and self breast examination is also very important because all the girls or the ladies cannot go each and every time. and if they are told about this self breast examination some to some extent we can detect or we can feel that they are having some problems and as such they should be assured that uh, all the lumps or breast problems are not malignant they are 90 95% are benign so they should not be um, very much apprehensive and they should come forward and as far as this uh, gynecologists are concerned the girls are always come girls or ladies they do come to the gynecologist or lady doctor so we should also do the clinical examination and i must say it should be opportunistic examination because during pregnancy we are seeing if there is any menstrual problem in young girls adolescent girl we are examining them so it should be opportunistic examination as we do for this detection of the cancer cervix why the incidence of this cancer cervix has gone down after this breast cancer and it has come up so because we should do the opportunistic examination and as doctor said <coughs> triple test is very important triple test is very important and as far as the ultrasonography is concerned i must say it is very important and easily can be done because in certain situations as he enumerated during pregnancy during lactation and during uh, young girls when the breast is dense under the age of the 40 and when there is huge lump in the breast it cannot be done by this mammography and the breast uh, ultrasonography is very important modality for that or if there is any acute problem or if there is any disability in the patient's body then they can go for this ultrasonography rather than this um, uh, this thing mammography 
so as he said it is very important and simultaneously we can do the biopsy also ultrasound guided biopsy also can be done so these are the things and doc sir has very beautifully enumerated all these things and i must congratulate for uh, this uh, lecture and the organizers also for uh, doing this um, presentation thank you so much sangeeta uh, thank you madam so much uh, now i think uh, dr rama shrivastava who is the president of indian medical association lucknow she has joined in ma'am uh, uh, welcome ma'am uh, we would like thank your you. uh, comments also on this very yeah. important topic uh, we know mm -hmm. that 60% of the women are coming in the later stages that is the stage 3 and stage 4 and right. there are several pitfalls in screening in the uh, country like india and uh, we also know that core biopsy is the gold standard and uh, fnac should not be done we should resort to core bi uh, uh, core biopsy so madam we need your uh, expert views uh, on this very important mm -hmm. topic thank you sangeeta dr agarwal and uh, madam hemprabha has already narrated everything extensively but primarily because i am a general surgeon so i uh, have an experience that uh, first the patient goes to the gynecologist usually <laughs> the gynecologist is the first person to see if there is a breast lump or not so i would request all the gynecologists that whenever they get a complaint of such a patient that there is swelling in the breast or there is pain in the breast or there is any change in size or shape of the breast or uh, there is some new lump in the breast then uh, they should put their hands palpate and examine the patient clinically first and then send to some general surgeon or uh, uh, breast surgeon if they are suspicious of some carcinoma or even if benign tumor is there because uh, most of the gynecologists they are not operating on uh, breast tumors so they need a support of general surgeon or some onco surgeon so what whenever possible uh, i will request that they should refer the patients but uh, examine them clinically primarily right sorry actually um, uh, one of my patients is seriously sick and uh, i am referring her to sgpgi so i am constantly talking to them that is the reason i joined late and i am a bit uh, diverted from my uh, focus so uh, and october is the month for breast cancer awareness all over and we know that pink is the color for breast cancer awareness so uh, my request is that we must keep generating awareness by doing cmes by doing uh, short lectures like we did today but uh, this should include some patients also like rosana madam had already uh, gone to many schools and colleges and similarly i think uh, on the platform of ima or wdw it's all the same a group of uh, doctors can visit schools and colleges and uh, generate awareness about these swellings because at younger age benign swellings are there breast mouse or uh, bbds benign breast disease are there but after the age of 50 years uh, there is high suspicion of malignancy so if in early age we make them conscious like uh, madam gupta said about uh, self examination and all and report to the doctor as soon as possible that will help many patients to get rid of this disease thank you so much thank you madam for your uh, pearls of wisdom and uh, now uh, thank you ma'am for joining in spite of your emergency and your uh, sick patient uh, thank you so much now i want to uh, thank you ma'am Uh, i want to share a few comments on uh, the myths and facts regarding the breast cancer so i would be sharing my screen
Everybody can see my screen? Yes. Yes, Sangeeta, we can see. Yes. So we all know that breast, uh, there is a myth that uh, uh, the breast cancer is only found in the females. But this cancer can also be present in the male population. Previously, it uh, was said that it only occurred in the elderly uh, woman, that is woman above 50 years of age. But now there is a paradigm shift towards the younger age group. Cell breast examination, uh, usually people think that it should come in the reproductive age group, but it can start in the adolescent or maybe as early as 20 years of age. And this is really very important. Um, to detect the cancer early. The menopause hormonal therapy and breast cancer, uh, it is also very important. It is said that it is less associated with estrogen and more associated with the progesterone because normally we think that the estrogen is the culprit, but now it is uh, thought that progesterone is the main factor. Uh, it is seen that it is more common with the synthetic progesterones compared to the natural uh, progesterones like the micronized progesterones or the didrogesterones. And the risk attributable to the menopause hormonal therapy, it decreases after the therapy uh, is stopped. And it is more common with the uh, continuous uh, menopause hormonal therapy rather than the sequential hormonal therapy. Continuous means when the estrogen and the progesterone is given throughout the, uh, throughout the uh, cycle and sequential means when the estrogen is given uh, throughout the cycle and um, the progesterone is given 12 days in the calendar month. And it is more common with the oral menopause hormonal therapy and it is almost negligible with the transdermal uh, hormonal therapy. And the risk using the estradiol and the didrogesterone is similar to the baseline risk. That is the risk is very low if we are using the estradiol and didrogesterone. And estrogen only MHTs, they have lesser incidence compared to the estrogen and progesterone MHT. That is, if the MHT has only estrogen, the incidence of breast cancer is lower compared to the combination where estrogen and the progesterone is given together. So I wanted to highlight these important facts which we should always keep in mind when we are given a menopausal hormonal therapy prescription. Okay. Uh, so now I mm, ask, uh, I unshare my screen and I ask uh, uh, Dr. Manisha Agarwal to take up the question answers if they are in the chat box. Dr. Agarwal, do you want to say anything, Dr. Sandeet Agarwal? I think the Madam has the elaborated. menopause hormonal therapy, which I so, highlighted. I think you have explained the whole thing very nicely. So, because I, I think you have covered this woman initiative, this woman nurse initiative study recently published that estrogen is not the culprit; it's mainly the progesterone. Yes. And sir. The, so they have published the one <laughs> segment now, and the, most probably they will publish the next segment next year. So it will be more clear about the this postmenopausal hormonal therapy. Yes, sir. So, Dr. Manisha, do you want to take up the question? There are questions. One is the that uh, male is also can have the, the this uh, uh, breast cancer. So, already you have told that yes, it yeah. can around be. one percent of the male generally has breast cancer. So, if you will, the incidence is very less. One, one, out, one out of hundred of the male is generally have breast cancer. In the female, it's a different in different country, but male breast cancer incidence is almost same because the female breast cancer generally is associated with mainly lifestyle yeah. changes. Male breast cancer is generally due to the hormonal and generally it's in the later oh, stage of the disease. Sir, I wanted to ask you one question. If the patient is uh, BRAC1 and 2 positive, yeah. mutation positive, but yeah. she doesn't have cancer presently, yeah. Uh, can she be given the menopause hormonal therapy? So the breast cancer age, if you will see the breast cancer incidence in the BRCA1 and BRCA2 positive in generally in younger age. So if the patient is BRCA mutated, I, I, the 60 to 70% of the person generally have cancer. So lifetime risk is 95%, but generally it occurs in early age. So hormonal therapy, if you will say, ask me, absolute contraindication is not there. 
if you feel that patient need hormonal therapy you can give it for the short period 6 months to 1 year but don't go beyond 1 year as per the international guideline or as per the interna- international suggestion but it's not absolutely contraindicated okay sir thank you so much sir there is one more question that what do you mean by first degree family history so first degree family history means suppose there is a patient so first degree family m- member will be immediate father mother then his siblings yes. or her siblings brother sister and their offspring so first degree means immediate one generation up and one generation down sir there is uh, one more question from the other group that uh, should this uh, uh, the wired bra can be uh, co- uh, cause of the this breast cancer if it is used for the long term so we don't know this answer at present so people sir, say I- but there is no scientific evidence about this Yes, sir. I did a program this breast cancer awareness with Mahila College uh, students. Yeah. They have asked this question. Yeah. So there is no evidence for this. So we don't know the answer of this. Sir, there is one more query that all of uh, our doctors, including us, uh, so many times I have seen that if the patient came to us, they usually write the first line is that you go and do the FNAC if there is a breast lump. Even in the 30 years, 35 years, uh, they used to uh, write that go and do the FNAC. Is the right practice? No, sir. So suppose means if you have if you are finding a d- abnormality in the clinical examination please do radiological examination either usg as per the age or mammography but if the usg also has the same barrett's category if usg is seeing that is a clear cut fibroadenoma of less than 1 cm and the age is less than 30 i am not going to do anything if the usg in mammography is saying no it's a barrett's 4 or barrett's 5 disease then i will do the triple assessment and i will do the biopsy so depending upon the age but if the age is more than 50 even a breast lump and mammography is normal i will do biopsy so depending on the age is a painless or is a multiple multifactorial to advise any fnac or biopsy but in the very young age less than 25 year if there is no family history of breast and ovarian cancer is better to follow up the patient and don't do any biopsy because it's generally painful we say it's painless but people if you will ask the patient experience it's generally painful it's not painless procedure completely so any more question from anyone want to ask any questions from the audience and the participants sir for core biopsy dr anjit yes, uh, you use some local anesthetics or as it is you are doing no we are covering with the local anesthesia local we do local anesthesia, anesthesia but okay. with the local anesthesia you can block the skin only only yes yes, yes you correct. are putting that needle inside the tumor sometimes it's really painful and it's nightmare for the some patient they will come yes. and say you that it was very painful procedure yes, yes, so yes, please yes. do biopsy and fnac when it is required we say that it's painless but it, as per my experience when we talk with the patient and if you will also talk they with the patient say, they yes, will say pain. it's a painful yes yes And thank you uh, core biopsy the needle is wide bore so it requires more uh, penetration and more pre- uh, wide bore the, than that uh, fnac so it's more painful than the fnac so it should be done under anesthesia and preferably under this uh, ultrasound guided probe do i am i right dr sanjeev so suppose if it is 6 cm and 7 cm lump so we generally don't do usg because you can do core biopsy by palpating the lump but okay. yes if it is a small lump it is a 2 to 3 cm lump you can do with the usg guidance so depending upon the presentation of the patient because in our setup they will go and go in a queue for the usg and i will do the usg by means core biopsy just now on my opd itself so depending upon the logistic and everything Yes, USG guided core biopsy is the gold standard if you can do. But in our setup, if it is a palpable lump, clearly palpable, we are seeing the tumor of five centimeter. We do non-core, non-USG guided biopsy. But if the tumor is small, the lady is very okay. in anxiety. We do USG guided. And if it is deep seated, also. Yeah, if it is deep seated, also. Sir, there is one more question. that uh, what is the role of pet scan and mri in breast cancer so 
MRI breast, uh, putting, taking your question in the PET CT first and then MRI breast second. So PET CT role is in the two setting. One is if the tumor is very advanced, means locally advanced breast cancer, stage three disease, you want to see the liver, lung and bone that disease has spread it to other organ of the body, yes or no. Then PET CT is the ideal investigation if it is available, but CT scan, CT thorax, whole abdomen and bone scan or ultrasound, whole abdomen, chest x-ray and alkaline phosphatase, LFT. These all three are advised as per the guideline, as per the availability in the local area. So if you don't have PET CT, please do CT thorax, whole abdomen and bone scan. If you don't have CT thorax, whole abdomen and bone scan, then do USG abdomen, chest x-ray and liver function test. These all three battery of investigation are acceptable. PET CT disadvantage is high false positive. Many times you will say that there is a lightening up in the liver and lung. And when we will change this, it's coming as negative. So the false positive rate is very high in the PET CT scan. Coming to the MRI breast, what are the specific indication of MRI breast? Only one or two indication for MRI breast. You can do with the MEMO plus USG in the majority of the patient. One is the BRCA carrier, means BRCA mutated patient. If you want to screen the patient yearly instead of the prophylactic surgery, then MRI is the useful investigation instead of mammography. And second is when there is a breast implant. Second, third, when there is an isolated axillary gland only. If you are seeing a patient with axillary gland with cancer and there is no breast lump, in that setting, MRI is generally helpful. And fourth is the Paget's disease. Paget's disease of the nipple, MRI is generally advisable. Least indication is lobular carcinoma. If you are seeing a patient with lobular carcinoma and if you want to do breast conservation, please do MRI breast. Sir, thank you very much. Sir, there is a one more question in the chat box. What are the predisposing factors for the breast cancer? So predisposing factor for the breast cancer I want to take the question in a different way. What are the causes of the breast cancer? So in the 90% of the patient, we don't know the cause. In around 5 to 8% of the case, cases, it's a due to genetic mutation or this BRCA gene or TP53 gene. Predisposing factor is mainly lifestyle factors, mainly obesity, the use of this fatty food or junk food, and high estrogen exposure early menarche, late menopause. These are the predisposing factors for the breast cancer. Some we can control, just like early menarche and late menopause can, can't be controlled. It's a natural phenomenon. So these are the non-preventable, but preventable are the good lifestyle, normal weight. Of, we can prevent obesity. We can do regular exercise. We can avoid junk food. So these are the mainly factors for the predisposing factor for the breast cancer. But in 80 to 85 percent of the cases, we don't know the cause of the breast cancer yet. Uh, sir, I want to add one uh, this story here that uh, just as uh, Dr. Rama told that uh, patients are coming first to the gynecologist, that is very true. And then we, we, are, uh, we should be very responsible and we must having the knowledge where to refer our patient. Yeah. Because this reference is not only the surgeon. Uh, that surgeon is maybe very competent, very good. But for the, especially for the breast cancer, only surgery is not the end point. Yeah. Yeah. Because after surgery, there are so many things will happen that whether she need the chemotherapy, hormonal therapy, what investigation, what have you have already told very nicely. So yeah. the my the th I just want to share that uh, if we have gone to the good surgeon and sur for one of uh, my known that uh, she went to the very good surgeon, very renowned surgeon of the cancer specialist, and he did uh, this FNAC without doing any mammography. Okay. And okay. after that, uh, as you told, FNAC was the suspicious. Then the surgery was done. Then lumpectomy was done and he advised that you go for the chemotherapy, radiation and all that. So you can think what was the mentality of the patient on, and her relatives. Yeah. So After the... that, he did the, he said, okay, uh, if you don't want it, okay, he did the partial mastectomy. 
and yeah. that report also come margins were positive yeah so two surgery already done there was no use loss of uh, this uh, money is not a matter but uh, peace of the mind and what can happen yeah. anybody can imagine so, a doctor also as a primary physician i must say that you take the responsibility of the patient suppose i am seeing a patient and i am referring the patient to somebody else please be in contact with the patient what's happening to the patient you should know and the patient should come back and say you that what's the what surgeon is doing so as a gynecologist i really feel that you know you need to know the complete treatment because sometime the people may be misguided and where that you are the person to guide them properly sir totally agree with this and the another my point is that being a gynecologist or physician we have to refer the our patient to the place where the specialist oncology like the breast oncologist will be there and that center will be fully equipped for the after the follow up and everything and not only the surgery and chemotherapy and radiation only there should be a good counselor also because uh, as i feel there is a very big role of counselor from the start of the before the surgery to counsel for the this port and after surgery how to do the exercise and so many things so i have seen three four uh, my colleagues and my patients so many patients that because of this uh, the counseling they have developed the lymphedema in the hand they are just depressed so this is my message to all my colleagues uh, and uh, friends that we must send the our patient to the right place not only seeing the surgeon but other infrastructure and other facilities also where we are sending our patient and as dr sanjit rightly said that we must be in contact to the our patients and we must follow up that give the uh, this uh, one uh, this comfort also that yes my doctor is with me that is a, also another thing that we have to follow and they will uh, afterwards they will come to us also for the small small things so very that true, is manisha very true very true dr agarwal i want to ask one thing from you if the mother is uh, detected as a cancer person breast cancer patient so how early uh, should uh, the uh, the daughter be uh, screened how early so if mother is detected by breast cancer first we need to see that mother is positive for brca or not okay sir. so first take the family history so we don't do braca testing in every female so there are specific indication for doing braca testing it's just like if the age is less than 50 year diagnosed with breast cancer just immediate one family immediate in the first degree relative has cancer with this cancer patient in triple negative breast cancer so there is specific eight and nine indication where you should advise braca testing it's not for all breast cancer patients as per the nccn guideline or as per the indian breast cancer guideline also suppose a mother of is found to be braca positive then we have to think for the family so ideal age more than 25 year first so if you are diagnosed a patient at around 25 around 50 year and her daughter is she come to be positive for the braca and if her if her daughter is only 18 year braca testing at that that age is not required so generally to be started as the 25 year the first thing second thing if the mother is very young so mother is around only 32 or 31 year so 10 year before the 31 so 21 year so less than 25 year there are specific indication because in the very young age the chances of tp 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 53 mutations are there and in that generally breast cancer occur between 20 to 25 year so between 20 to 25 year specific indication generally when they attain the age of 25 year then you start the the follow up of this thing first test her for braca if possible if she found to be braca carrier then follow up if she found to be braca negative no follow up is required okay sir thank you and the genetic counseling should also be done the girl should yeah. be a should have the genetic counseling yeah genetic and counseling is the upset. part of this whole testing program yes without the genetic counselor is very difficult to do the gen- this braca test okay. and one thing i like to ask that uh, braca 1 braca 2 you are doing and in what which type of the cases you are doing her 2 her 2 means her 2 receptor or yes 
So breast cancer, we generally do ERPR and HER2 in all patients. Three, all three are being done. All three being done. Okay. So suppose a patient is non-affording to HER2, means the, because if you are doing a HER2, there is a specific purpose of doing HER2 because yes. patient will need Pardon. trastuzumab. So in yes. our setup, if they are not getting trastuzumab, they are supported by our Tata Trust bunny. So mm -hmm. we are doing HER2 in all patients. But if you are seeing a patient, she is so poor that she can't afford the treatment. So doing her to in is not justified to pay 6,000 or 7,000 rupee, rupees of money to, to, for that her to only. Okay, thank you. So we will conclude the session. I don't have so much to say for summarized because everything is already summarized. Only thing I want to say that now we are living in the era of the preventive oncology. As uh, Sir already said, that is creating awareness is the key. So awareness, awareness, awareness should be every step uh, will be the, our mantra to reduce the morbidity, mortality and reduce the this uh, patient who are coming late to us. So they can, we can have the patient in the early stage. So the, uh, the survival rate will be the 98 to 99% by this awareness and early detection. And screening is the cornerstone and screening should be the triple assessment especially. So early detection will save the life. And uh, we must tell our doctors, uh, oh, sorry, uh, patients that any lump sign, anything you will feel in the, uh, your breast. So the breast awareness of the patients or other ladies is very, very important because it is seen that 90% of the time they used to come themselves for the doctor to that they are having some problem. So breast awareness is very, very important. As uh, Dr. Sangeeta also told that they have to start at the age of 20 years and it should be done every month uh, just five to seven days after the menstrual period and in the post menopause anytime uh, every month and uh, this is not the replacement of the clinical breast examination so we have to tell our ladies that they must go yearly for the breast uh, clinical breast exam examination to their gynae doctor or the oncologist so uh, this, this will uh, this we together fight the breast cancer without fear and this is our joint responsibility uh, to awareness and early detection and this journey will go on this will not end here today okay thank you very Dr. much manisha i want to add a very important point yeah. uh, which might be of clinical value to our friends uh, who have joined when you ask a, a girl to do cell breast examination, you should always tell that it should be done post menstrually. And yeah, I have told I have told that yes. it should be done five to seven days after the, after the and she should make the uh, mark it in her calendar that uh, it should be done every uh, on the same date every month. And in the younger age group, if you want to do uh, go in for a clinical breast examination, it should be done every three yearly. Yes. Yes. If we go below, and one thing more uh, very easy to remember for the clinical breast examination that she will gift her uh, that on the birthday or anniversary she will mark that yearly she has to go for the clinical breast examination for her gynecologist. Uh, and uh, Dr. H P Gupta can uh, she will Madam will give a very nice comment on this also. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one thing I want to add after him, Prabha madam. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am, please. Manisha, it is not for the uh, public and the patients also. Our association, Women Doctors Wing, because I have seen uh, uh, very recently, many of our doctors, we lost our uh, uh, dear ones, doctors, because this is not that we are not knowing it. It is we are neglecting ourselves. We are sitting in this bazaar, in this door, we understand that we can't do it. It's not like that. It's not like that. So this, this uh, thanks so much to Dr. Agrawal 
he has given briefly so nicely but i this is a message for my women colleagues also it's only only we are teaching we should also be careful about our health also because women doctors wing is not only meant for education for their well being their mental spiritual health as well thank you so i just want to give one more message to our gynecologist friend that we are just doing the pap smear in each and every lady we are coming to us we must give one minute to ask them if they have seen their breast and if not seen they must do this so in our department also we have just integrated the breast cancer and cervical cancer together and any patient is coming to us we are just uh, asking her to see your breast uh, in front of us if and we used to tell how to do the self breast examination in opd very so, good so that is a great job very doctor, nice it must be beneficial and like the uh, this cervical cancer rate has come down i this is my hope and firm belief that we can bring down the breast cancer rate also and it's early detection also good very nice yes, it is very important yeah. to teach her that girl or that lady how to do the cell based examination yes because they should know what position and how to palpate because most of they should not palpate between fingers because every time they will feel between fingers they will feel a lump because the tissue is there so they should be told that they should palpate by the flat of the hand right arm and in a particular manner in particular position and if there is any pain she they should they should not press the nipples to see any discharge it is doctor's duty to see if there is any or if they will complain of that and any discharge blood mixed discharge purulent discharge milk discharge because under 40 years is all age group of the ladies will be coming so if she is not lactating she should be alarmed that this is not the normal thing to have a milk discharge from the breast or serious discharge from the breast or any blood mixed discharge or purulent discharge so because there are other possibilities supposing she is having pituitary adenoma pituitary adenoma that will Inverted. also cause this uh, milk discharge unless it is a galactorrhea or she is a lactating mother so it should also be investigated accordingly so they should be asked precisely about all these questions and if there is any pain then she should come to us because pain mastalgia is very common cause mastalgia is a very common cause and we should also inquire whether it is cyclic mastalgia or acyclic mastalgia cyclic means it is a because of the hormonal changes and that's why manisha has rightly said that it should be done after the periods are over because there will be the hormonal effect in peak of the hormones will be gone so there will be better examination during that period in the post menstrual phase so any discharge she should inform in the history of trauma also i had one lady about 39 40 years old and she was unmarried she came with a bilateral lump and painful lump and she was told by some doctor that you will require operation she told me she came to me i examined her whatever i saw i gave her some antibiotic and anti inflammatory and then i because it was very painful so i felt that it should be treated first and then i sent her for this ultrasonography and there is no pathology over there but on asking or interrogating the history she said that she had some trauma because she was mentally subnormal and she had some trauma over the breast and that's why she is having this lump so it is very important to gain the confidence of the patient and to counsel them and their privacy should also be maintained otherwise they won't come out of their problem so it is very important and i must say that uh, thank you sangeeta and manisha and dr ruksana for organizing this type of the seminars or webinars for the awareness of the general public thank you
can i ask one question only regarding self breast examination i mean i really wanted to you people experience suppose you have said to a person that please do self breast examination and go ahead and do breast self breast examination in your experience how many pe- people are doing it for one year continuous 12 no. 12 in a year so so That's if you right. will ask you uh, your experience means what's the compliance of the self breast examination no it does i don't think because the patients don't come earlier and normal stage no suppose you have given a lady means normal lady and you said that please do self breast examination in your experience what's the means what's the come out of your advice to the self breast examination are people doing it no they are not doing regularly they are not doing regularly it's usually it is an accidental detection and or whenever they are taking bath or they are putting the soap over the, their body then only detected or yes. if there is any discharge then they come off their own so if they are self conscious then they will come to us because this counseling is very important to make them conscious the, to make them aware i yes. know i agree with you that it is not a regular feature it cannot be a regular feature because that cannot be done regularly every month it is not possible but awareness and sensitize the patients is very important yeah, sensitization yeah. is very important that this is what we are doing initially when we are junior faculty now the graph of the cancer breast has risen like this steep rise in this and now we don't dare to touch that lump surgically but initially when we were younger junior faculty small fibroadenoma press we used to remove we used to remove because at that time maybe because of the lifestyle changes because of the low parity or because of the many other factors the incidence is increasing and increasing and that time we were not afraid of that or rather you must say you can say that those days we were daring as a younger surgeon so we used to remove small fibroadenoma but even then the adenoma smaller than 2 cm we don't used to touch we used to tell them they come for check up after 6 months or a year because it doesn't require any intervention so this is the that's how the graph has risen and that's how that we have withdrawn from that uh, particular area although we are the one we are the first portal or initial portal when the ladies are coming to us only Yeah. So we are the first person to encounter the problem. Yeah, means in our setup also, I mean, ninety percent of the patient referred to us by one gynecologist only. Yes, exactly. Yes. exactly. I completely agree with you. Yes. Hey, Mji, you are a very good teacher. You are a very good teacher. Yes, ma'am. So, sir, we want to just emphasize on this uh, how we can just motivate to do the self breast examination. Yeah, means I personally feel that we need to reinforce it multiple times. Yeah. So, right. self breast examination. So, indirect effect of self breast examination is awareness. Yes. So. so multiple reinforcement is required for the same group of the people you need to go multiple time once you have gone to a society and said about awareness and then you are going after 10 year that will not benefit the society yes. so multiple time in reinforcement is required so that's the cycle and if you are if you have started a program please do it repeatedly if you really want to put a impact on that that group of population you need to go multiple time or I, now the social media is there create a whatsapp group and send them the video and tell them that they have seen they have liked yes or no yes truly so said sir because in one outreach camp i have asked that uh, 90% of the ladies didn't know that they uh, the, there is a self breast examination and they are not aware of the breast cancer even Yeah. there is a breast cancer and uh, in the early stage it can be detected and it can be treated without chemotherapy and radiation they don't yeah. know this so indirect so, effect of every program is means is screening and this self breast examination a clinical breast examination indirect effect is awareness and i think if we can hit on the awareness very hard we can detect early Yes, sir. but they are very much aware that it is a dangerous thing. If there yeah. is an alarm, it is dangerous. 
any type yeah. of the lump and yeah. it, they are coming to us with the lump that means they are touching the breast and they are self palpating that so yeah. somehow or other they are being aware of that and they are coming to us to uh, to for consultation or any opinion so that is because of the self examination they do come for us for check up because of their self examination rightly said तभी तो हमारे पास आए नहीं तो कैसे आएंगे वो लोग Is they have examined yeah, okay. themselves once in five years, so this is not self-breast examination, in my viewpoint. And they came oh, at six that, or six, six centimeter lesion or seven. And I disagree or dis, dis, disagree with you for this point. This the because we see fifty to sixty percent of the patient with the six to seven centimeter lump. So if we are doing self-breast examination, why they are coming at six centimeter lump? Okay. Why they are not coming at one centimeter lump? so compliance to the self breast examination is really impossible to achieve and that we all should understand that's why its sensitivity is very low and yes. specificity also low it is very it's low it's only 20% means yes so, so still we are seeing 60% of the patient with 6 cm disease so somewhere i think awareness lack is there and we need to sensitize people multiple times yes exactly that is the key So reinforcement is the key. Keep reinforcing self-breast examination. We all will do this with our team and field workers. Then only we can conquer the fight. So, Dr. Manisha, you can now sum up and uh, propose the vote of thanks. I think the sum up to बहुत सारा हो गया. the key point is that we have to ad not advise every patient the fnac we have to advise the core biopsy and uh, even my suggestion is that before doing ourselves to send the uh, this core biopsy or mammography we uh, if there is any suspicious lump or uh, any breast lump uh, that is increasing in size or even in the early stage there is dimpling uh, we have to refer directly to the breast oncosurgeon because uh, he is the right person and from the very beginning how he want to do what he want to do that will be the best guide so we have to do the that one but if patient is not uh, willing that time then we have to advise the core biopsy that is the best thing and as sir said that mammography will be advised after the age of 40 and ultrasound should be advised before the age of 40 so we should be very demarcated about these uh, two imaging uh, this uh, modalities and uh, so early the, this detection as sir so said that if we have did the core by by core biopsy then there is the nf tissue and that can be stored and it will tell the hormonal status also okay. and uh, the, the patient can be treated even without the chemotherapy and radiotherapy so these are, and uh, we in uh, they sir has very nicely told the tnm classification and how this classification will affect the uh, this uh, mortality of the patient that uh, is also very very important so after this summing up i will come to the vote of thanks it is my proud privilege uh, on the behalf of indian medical association and women's doctor wing of lucknow to deliver the vote of thanks to our guest speaker dr sanchit kumar agrawal consultant breast onco surgery tata medical center kolkata for her excellent talk and sparing his valuable time for us and very interesting and knowledgeable discussion also my special thanks to chair person dr rama shrivastava president uh, indian medical association uh, dr jd rawat secretary indian medical association dr ruksana khan ma'am chair person wdw up and dr hp gupta our uh, renowned and best teacher one of the best teacher for their uh, constant motivational 
uh, support for all the activities. My extended thanks to all my teachers and seniors for joining us with a gesture of encouragement. Thanks to all of you, Madam. My sincere thanks to all my colleagues, students, audience for a good participation to make this webinar successful. My warm thanks to the Krithi Anand, CEO and co-founder of the Career Pool and Sakrati Foundation for sponsoring this session. We will like to see you uh, much more uh, such opportuni opportunities in the future. Last not the least, a big thank to my colleague, Dr. Sangeeta Mehrutra, Secretary WDW Lucknow, for her untiring efforts to make this webinar successful. So now we will wind up this session with the hope that by today, to, uh, today uh, as with the, today's knowledge, we will definitely change our perspective to guide our patient, which will reduce the morbidity and mortality by the breast cancer. So with a big thanks to you all to see soon and to continue this journey of the breast cancer awareness in our 